Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com which is my website uh, my name is Jason Newland which is my name uh, oh god I don't know um, this is Let Me Bore You to, S- to Sleep which is the name of the podcast and I'm finding myself very hilarious at the moment for no reason, even when I'm <laughs> not saying anything funny, I'm laughing at what I'm saying, so please excuse my silliness. <clears throat> and please only listen when you can safely turn off your brain, uh, and also only listen when you can safely close your eyes. So... Um, If you're in a high speed car chase trying to get away from the cops, you know, just robbed a bank or something, then please don't you know, t- switch this off. Uh, actually, no, listen so that you crash into a tree. <laughs> um, so, yeah, not really. So, hello, everybody. This is Saturday, the. I don't know. Saturday the, I think it's the 12th, does my thing have a calendar, a clock, yeah it's a clock, I can click on a clock, Sunday, sorry, Sunday the 12th of January, 7 minutes past 2am, that's what it is, well, that's what it is, and, uh, Oh, my tummy's rumbling. I had a Chinese takeaway today. The first time. Not ever, but... Well, actually, no, I had one um, a few months ago, but it was... I didn't phone it in, you know. I didn't order it over the phone. I just went up there and got it got home and you know the food was a little bit cold but uh, that was an an omelette and chips and the chips ooh ooh no not good the chips weren't good the omelette was nice but the chips mm, nah no nil poire for the chips uh, what I did I ordered uh, some Chinese takeaway for me and my friend and we it was alright you know that's the whole story (laughs) it really is wow that was boring so tell me a story about your your day your your the Chinese takeaway you had well I ordered the Chinese takeaway it was delivered and I ate it then I went to the toilet about half an hour later yeah that's the story perhaps next time leave out the toilet part okay fair enough <sighs> oh I had no idea what I was talking about just then because I had a knock at the door but it's okay. Um, who knows? I was talking about something. Don't know what it was. Couldn't have been important. And I'm only four minutes into the recording, so I don't think. Uh, a stupid chair. Is this squeaky chair as annoying for you as it is for me? <laughs> it's really. It's seriously. It's it's got. It's getting worse. But I can't sit like a statue. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. You can follow me. And I'm actually... I'm going to press pause. I'm going to move to a different chair. So you haven't got to listen to me... Moving. But I will... Press pause and I'll come straight back. Right. I'm now back. I'm back. I'm back. 
So I've moved to a different chair. And I'm starting to wonder why didn't I sit in this other chair to start with? It's because I like, <laughs> I like sitting in the other chair. That's probably why. So I've, um, my friend gave me this chair to put into my recording studio. Or my garden shed, if you want to call it that. That lives in my bedroom. That still needs to be soundproofed before I can really use it. Because a wooden shed isn't... It's actually... I don't know if you can hear this. It's a little bit more echoey over here. Because over the other side of the room, in the living room, I've got soundproof foam all across that one wall and over another wall, the other side of the room. This side of the room, I've got soundproof foam across half of the wall, but it's at the top of the wall. So my head, my whole of my body, well, I'm sitting in a chair, and my head goes up to nearly half of the wall, sitting down, because I'm really tall, I'm seven foot three, and the soundproof foam is at the top. But if it was at the bottom, which it will be, because I'm gonna have soundproof foam in the whole place eventually, it should be a bit quieter, a bit less echoey. But in the shed, it's a bit echoey, I'll be honest. And it's a bit grotty. Um, sitting, <laughs> sitting in a dark shed, because I have to have the door closed, um, including the bedroom door, the living room door, to keep Andre in here while I'm in the bedroom but he then scratches at the door to get out doesn't care if the door's open but once it's closed he has to get through it and once it's open he doesn't want to get through it anymore that's just his little uh, thing and uh, so I want to I'm going to soundproof the shed before I start using it because so I did a couple of recordings in it and a couple of things I need I need it soundproofed uh, it's not going to be perfect it's not a professional it's a shed so it's not a professional recording studio and there's not enough room in there to have equipment it's basically just the space um, you know in a recording studio that you see on TV fil and films and stuff where the singer is behind the glass and the recording studio equipment's the other side and they're twiddling each other's knobs and stuff you know to sort of change the, the volume and stuff like that and they say play it again Sam and they do all that stuff and that's what a shed is. It's kind of the other part of it. Now, if I wanted to, and it would take me a long time to do this, I suppose I could start trying to put together professional equipment. You know, over the next few years, try to um, sort of build a recording studio perhaps this side of the wall like in the living room and then have the wires going through the wall into the shed which is the other side of the wall but I just yeah I don't know I think the quality of the sound now is fairly good for what it is. See, so if I started singing uh, a song, let's say uh, One Night With You from Elvis Presley, uh, possibly the greatest song he ever sung vocally, it's great vocals on that. I'd, I would actually argue for at least 20 seconds 
but that is his greatest vocal performance uh, because of the rawness of it the real energy that he puts into it uh, some people might say yeah what about the it's now or never or the wonder of you or some of the other like later songs where he's uh, it's very operatic in the way he sings uh, showing off his range he has amazing range you may be noticing right now that I love Elvis Presley I love Elvis Presley I think he's phenomenal and you know what I wouldn't care if he'd been popular or not I wouldn't care if uh, it wouldn't have bothered me I don't like him because of how popular he was although I wouldn't have probably known about him if it hadn't been for how popular he'd been and he died when I was six or just before I was seven years old in 1977 I didn't know who he was then but my oldest brother was a fan because my oldest brother was four years older than me so he'd he'd be what seven eight nine ten eleven years old when when the king passed on so I suppose I wanted to be like my brother definitely wanted to be as tall as him because he's very tall if you saw me and him I looked like a squashed version I looked like <laughs> I do I look like a, a slightly younger version of him but someone's pushed on my head really hard so that my body's kind of squashed um, what a lovely picture so yeah he's I'm 5'8 and he's I don't know what he is about 6'4 six, six or something like that 6'3, six, 6'4 six, it's a lot, a hell of a lot taller than me but uh I don't care I feel I'm up to about his his neck or his chin or his neck or his shoulders something like that he's head and shoulders above me so what was my point on that one there was a point I don't know what it was what was it Elvis I love Elvis but if I was to start singing the quality of the audio wouldn't be great so the microphone for making these podcasts and the recording equipment I'm making these podcasts on is perfect for speech for talking But I'm not sure how good it would be if there was a group of people talking together. Because I've got a microphone on my lapel. Well, it's a lapel microphone. Which is sort of attached to my top. And, of course, whenever I yawn, I put the microphone actually down my throat. So that it's it really uh, annoys everyone. I'm incredibly petty. I can't let things go. It's ridiculous. Seriously. There's stuff that happened when I was 10 that I'm still annoyed about. Not even big things, like little things. That's something that someone said to me when I was at school when I was 10. I still hold a grudge. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Very, very odd. Oh so petty it's ridiculous sometimes not always but I'm aware of it I know being aware of something isn't always enough you know someone says I'm aware that I'm an arsehole and I'm rude to everyone it's not really enough just to be aware of it maybe you know it's an opportunity to be a bit kinder perhaps perhaps but I don't do that generally uh, 
but yeah I do I think it's one of those things I never forgive anyone ever for anything but I do I forget apart from when I remember it you know I'm not I don't there's always something new to focus on I mean that's one of the good things about life there's always something new you know it's there's always new things happening uh, we've, whether it's the news whether it's the weather it's a different day we, in England the United the Kingdom of England states of America whatever it's, this country is and we every day is I mean not even every day we have like five different weather systems per hour sometimes it's it's constantly changing the weather changes more than my own mind and that's something constantly changing my mind and I quite like that well, not my mind changing but I quite like well, there's a benefit of having a mind that changes regularly there's a lot of uh, you know unbenefits of it as in uh, stability and making decisions and sticking to those decisions and you know, planning things and not letting people down at the last minute, you know, those kind of things. Uh, but, or letting things, yeah, but one of the good things of being um, uh, indecisive is, at times, is because none of us are anything all the time, are we? So I thought I'd give myself that label. I'm an indecisive person. Are you sure? Yep. I've decided. Definitely indecisive. You know, it's like, well, maybe you're not then. But sometimes I am. And it's fine. Yeah, I've forgotten what... <laughs> oh yeah the benefit is I don't get too stuck in beliefs as much as perhaps I would otherwise possibly a little bit I can see sometimes not always but I can see kind of two sides to the argument sometimes more I can see a hundred sides to an argument sometimes because different people can have different opinions and stuff and I find it quite interesting I do uh, I listen to LBC radio it's on the global player online if you ever want to check it out and it's a talk radio show in England and but it's available worldwide anyone can listen to it online or you can listen to it on the radio FM or whatever I don't know uh, or it's on Freeview as well if you're if in the UK seven, seven, it's channel 732 if you're in the UK and it's uh, Freeview number 732 732 that's the channel and you might think wow especially if you're in other countries I think I thought England only had five channels you've got 732 channels and they're all free no, we don't have 732 channels. I've got no idea why why LBC Radio is on 732, because we do not have that many. Uh, I've not counted them. There's, there's a few, but uh, bit by bit they seem to be decreasing. Like Five Star was... Uh, it's now gone, closed. I used to watch that. Five star, not the, the group. Rain, rain, shine, shine. De 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 de. Rain, 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 shine, shine. That was the uh, five star. They were 
the English equivalent to the Jacksons um, in a sense of it was a family of singers uh, all singing like brothers and sisters singing together like the Jacksons was uh, so although to be fair the Jacksons was just boys wasn't it I don't think Janet or Latoya ever sung with the Jacksons did they don't think they did don't think they were even born well, they are born, but I don't think. Yeah, I mean, you think if Michael Jackson was, what was he about eight years old when he first started singing, or ten or something like that, wasn't he? When he first started singing in the Jacksons in the early seventies. So Latoya and Janet, they were both younger than him which means they would have been very young. Wow, that was that was boring. That really was boring. Oh, what a pointless what a pointless conversation. Oh, that was boring. Yeah. Anyway, I five star the TV channel is gone. And I used to have documentaries and old stuff from Channel 5. But I used to play quite good stuff sometimes. Um, but yeah, it's gone, so... Uh, what's another one I used to watch? BBC Three. I used to watch BBC Three every single night. And it was one of my favourite freeview channels. A uh, Family Guy used to be on it every night and other shows that I used to like watching and then they took that off and put it on the internet so I don't watch that anymore ITV2 took over some of the stuff like the Family Guy they play on ITV2 now every night but it's just always changing always changing So today I went to, oh, just a little update, just in case anyone's sort of interested. I had a, Rachel sort of sent me a message, thank you. Um, just regarding yesterday's podcast or yesterday's episode or uh, whatever of the uh, Let Me Boy You To Sleep, I mentioned about a neighbour being unwell. Uh, she's stable in hospital she's stable so that's all I can really say about that but I spoke to her sister yesterday and uh, she's stable so that's that's a good sign um, but I'm not going to go any more, any more into it I mentioned it yesterday and, and what it did get me thinking about though was the the human body because I'm not sure if you might have noticed, but I am incredibly uneducated. <laughs> I really am. I know very little about anything. And that's why I'm so good at making stuff up, because I don't know what the real stuff is. So I just have to kind of just wing it, wing wang it, really. And I try and, I mean, Molly. Uh, and a few other people <laughs> have sent me books in the past as well uh, to try and help with my education, especially on geography, uh, like in Australia and Canada and stuff like that, because I clearly don't know what I'm talking about half the time. But I do admit it, I mean, that's part of the fun of this, is that I'm just saying a bunch of rubbish sometimes mixed mixed in little little nuggets of uh, I was going to say gold but it's more like poo isn't it just little little fl little flakes of can't say wisdom I've got this I've got this real thing that no wise person would ever call themselves wise no genius would ever call themselves a genius but 
in my experience, and every every genius I've read about call themselves a genius. So, in that case, every genius or most geniuses are arrogant. So, and it's a wise person calling themselves wise again that's arrogance isn't it it's almost like I'm better than you I'm wiser than you I'm more intelligent than you all of those sentences I've never been able to say in my life and I probably never will be able to and I'm okay with that I know some stuff but it's just not stuff that anyone else is interested in. So, well, other, some people are, but, you know, it's... I'm okay with that. And you know what? What's weird? You might not know this. There's only... Okay, I, I, I normally say there's nobody, but there is a couple of people in my life that are interested in what I do. But the majority of people that I've ever met in the last 14 years I've been doing this, and this is now the 15th year, I've got no interest in what I'm doing. And I don't understand it. And you know what, what's weird, in some ways, if somebody tells me uh, that they do something that's uh, like a standard thing, you know, so, oh, I build, uh, I don't know, whatever it is, they do something that's, that a lot of other people do, that, that I would find, I wouldn't find as interesting as if someone said to me, well, actually what I do is I build uh, I don't know what well, if someone says I'm a taxidermist I mean I, I kind of would be a bit, a bit grossed out by it because I've seen the process but they're not they're dealing with uh, an animal that's already been already dead and they're not causing harm to anyone they're doing what you know they're, it's fine you know whatever but that would fi- I would find that fascinating because I've never met anybody that's a taxidermist. I've never met anyone that, or I've never known anybody that is a traffic warden. So if someone told me, if I met someone and said, I'm a traffic warden, I would actually, and this might sound weird, I'd kind of want to talk to them. Because I know that they're going to have some amazingly interesting stories to tell. They're going to have experienced things that most people never get to experience. I mean, of course, not all of it is going to be funny or nice. But it'd be interesting. Something different. And I'm, it's not that I want people, I expect people to be interested in me. It's not about that. It's like, I, f- I just kind of want them to be interested in what I'm doing. Not in me as a person, but just like, wow, so you're making, you do hypnosis recordings. And because I used to, most of my time was doing videos for long, for many years. And now it's you know, more audio. Uh, it started off audio and it became video and I used to take the audio from the video but I still made audios at the same time over the years as well separate and now it's predominantly well it's just exclusively audio at the moment although 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 I am thinking of videos so this can you hear that clicking that's the radiator. So the, the heating's coming on because it's a little bit chilly. Got to be a little bit chilly. I've got a bit of energy in me tonight, haven't I? Isn't that weird? A little bit of energy. I think it's because I had a sleep. 
it might be the Chinese takeaway. It's uh, I probably had I probably had quite a few calories in that food, but at the same time, I probably got a fairly kind of balanced meal, a cooked meal, rice, vegetables, and other stuff. So it's probably done me good, actually. And it tasted nice. And I don't always enjoy the food I eat. Because a lot of it now is like microwavable meals. And I'm not, I'm not really a cook. I can cook basic, you know, but I'm not, I'm not one of these... Uh, I don't I don't cook out of love. And I do admire people that do that because to me that that sound it just seems like a wonderful thing. Genuinely, I think it's just so lovely that something that we need to do. I mean eating to me is like going to the toilet. It's something I have to do. Um in fact, going to the toilet is sometimes more pleasurable, you know. But it's, but it's just it's something I have to do. I've got no choice; has to be done. And there's there's a little bit of a, a rebellious streak in me still to like, well, I want to do it. If I have to do it, I don't want to do it. I refuse to enjoy it when eating is can be a lovely experience, can't it? If the food's nice. But to be able to, I think it's amazing to be able to have that passion and that enjoyment to be in the kitchen, cooking a meal, to love cooking a meal, and then to enjoy eating the meal. And if you can enjoy washing up afterwards, that's, that's a, that's a, it's ticked all the boxes, isn't it? You filled all the gashes. It's done. You know, it's it's like wow. In some ways, the washing up is is the least part. That's probably the part I don't dislike. I don't like it, but it's the the easiest part. Easier than cooking and easier than eating it. Just if I could just skip to the washing up, I'd probably choose that. If I could just eat sweets and chocolate and donuts and cakes, but feel have the same feelings I do after eating food like real food, now that would be the dream. So, what I would basically like to do is have the opposite to a diabetic diet you know, the opposite. So, instead of eating healthy food all the time. I'd have unhealthy food all the time, just unhealthy stuff. But I don't eat like that, in case you wonder. I'd, I wouldn't have reached 49 if I'd been eating absolute rubbish my whole life. You know, I, I wouldn't have reached my age and still be able to walk around and have mobility and be well. So I'm doing something right. I feel one of the things that I've done, one of the choices I made many, many years ago, was to drink lots of water. So I know it's a little bit of a, um, a taboo now to, you know, with bold water and plastic and stuff like that. But all my adult life I've been drinking, I've been buying bottles of water from the shops, supermarkets, whatever, and I've been drinking them. I still do now. And the reason for that is partly because I thought, well, it's good for it's good for your body, isn't it? We are like majority water our body is apparently. And water is just so important for the body's system, the body and everything. 
but it's also I like water. It's one of those drinks that I like. Some people, I work with someone. When I was in insurance, um, it was my second insurance job. And oh, she was lovely. So I got really well with her. And I worked next to her. And every day, I'd have a bottle of water. I used to bring in either a big bottle or I'd have a pack of small bottles that I'd have in my in my cupboard underneath the desk and she'd always have flavoured water I used to call it coloured water but it is not flavoured isn't it and I, I used to well I used to make fun of her all day long really but not not horribly but I used to, used to make fun of me as well And um, but I said like, why 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 have you got f it would either be fizzy or flavoured but generally flavoured and fizzy if possible water not not soft drinks but water and I said uh, why why Pammy why and she said I don't like the taste of water that's what she said and she sounded nothing like that she had a lovely voice so I'm just, I'm not doing, I don't like the taste of water, Jason. Why do you keep hassling me? If you don't stop it, I'm going to HR and I'm going to complain about you. That's what she used to say. She didn't, she didn't at all. Um, that's one of the things I miss a little bit about working Yeah, um, especially, I think my first two insurance jobs were the ones that I liked the best. The third one, I suppose because I got ill at the end of it, um, although I'd been ill in previous jobs, but he, the, the place, yeah, it was like, the place was basically shutting down in front of me while we were there. You know, they were making, they were based, you know, the company got sold something like twice in the first six months. And they, they did, you know, people were, were moving on, leaving and all that stuff, redundancies and stuff. And so I didn't, in, I enjoyed part of the experience. And the people I worked with, that was the best part of the job. They were, they were just, you know, ninety nine percent were lovely, really, um, and I, I wouldn't say that if I didn't mean it. I actually really got on pretty well with, with with everyone that I kind of talked to. Some some people just didn't talk to me, but those that did, I got on well with them. And, but the other two jobs, because I, I was there for much longer, I was at the second one for about. It was, I don't know how long, August 2004 until I think it was the end of June or July 2007. So it's about, you know, nearly three years I was there. And, and then I went to university in the September. But yeah, I just, yeah kind of miss it a little bit I miss old Pammy but yeah I said why are you, why are you drinking that water she said, oh, which basically she, she liked where well, she said uh, you didn't like the taste of normal water and I said but it doesn't really taste of anything does it it's not but on on reflection after that because Back then, I used to buy nice water. I mean, buy nice. I'd buy not <laughs> not Evian. Was it Evian? I'd buy like the the, the most expensive bottled water, which wasn't expensive, but I you know, that's the one that I'd buy. And now I kind of buy the cheapest. Um, 
and sometimes I buy it even cheaper than the cheapest and it does taste different and I'm, I'm sure sometimes it is actually tap water although it says on the box it says on the packet the, the bowl this is not tap water <laughs> that's what it actually says not tap water so um I clearly got some kind of an issue with that a complex so I've been drinking is it Evian? Evian isn't Evian the, the sparkling water isn't it? or is Evian also normal water as well? what's the normal water the most popular one like for years for 20 odd years got a blue label but then all the water bottles seem to have blue labels I forget anyway that's all I used to drink Um, most of the time when I was at work this is like in my 20s before I did call centre work I'd drink coffee at work at home I sometimes had a cup of tea depending on what part of the decade it was but I'd have you know a cup of tea maybe really did I drink coffee at home when I was in my early 20s really did I drink coke Coke, because I drink coke now but I really drunk that then uh, I really drunk alcohol either I never drink alcohol now but I used to drink milk yeah so what I used to do I used to have uh, my dinner and I have a pint of milk in a bottle a pint of fresh milk with my dinner my evening meal and that would be my thing that I did for years and years and years and during the day I'd probably have a if I was able to get some milk I'd have a pint of milk as well then so I was trying to put some weight on I was trying to put a bit of put a meat on my bones but I wasn't able to because I was just so skinny I don't think I was as skinny as I felt but I was at the point I was I was slim enough to be self conscious about it which might seem weird if you see me now I've got a bit of a lump now you know but when I was younger I was really self conscious and I remember I had a massage in 1990, probably 1998, probably 1998. And I had put a bit of weight on by then, a little bit. Because when I went on antidepressants in 1995, I suddenly put some weight on. It's like, wow. But then I'd been ill for about 10 months. So I'd lost quite a bit of weight as well because I wasn't able to eat. And suddenly I put this weight on and I felt really good because that's all I, it's not all I ever wanted, but it's something that I really longed for from like childhood, you know, from, I didn't really notice that I was little until I probably went to high school and everyone else was going through puberty and I was 17 and still waiting for it to start so like when, when's this going to start we're not going to start growing hairs and uh, and it's weird because I used to go to karate I'd go to the gym like do weights I had my own weights at the bottom of the garden in my dad's uh, it was a conservatory big conservatory my dad had, a, dad had an office in there for his business but the other side of the bit I had um, my weights so all like these different weight bars curl bar weight bars bench pressing desk uh, you know thing also I had uh, two punch bags so I had all that he, he set that all up for me On the, he put the thing in the ceiling I bought all the other stuff although he did give me one bag I bought one punch bag, which was the heavy bag, but he gave me another bag. No, I bought a bag that, I bought one punch bag and it didn't have anything in it, that's right. 
So one we filled with sawdust, which he gave me, which I, I think he just, I don't know where he got it, maybe he'd been sawing something, and <laughs> which that's where sawdust comes from, isn't it? And the other bag had rags in it, so it's like a heavy bag and a, a light bag. And one was a proper kit, proper punch bag that I bought from the sports shop. And the other was an old kit bag, which was the same size as the punch bag, but it was a, like an old army kit bag, but without any straps on, I think. Or maybe it was actually an old punch bag, I don't, I don't know. Because my dad used to do judo and martial arts when he was younger as well. So maybe that's from then. Maybe he had that when he was a kid. Um, anyway, I had that, but I still couldn't put weight on. I just wanted to be big, you know? I wanted to be strong. And I felt like I was strong. But for me, I'd look in the mirror and think, well, how can I be strong? Because I'm little. You know, I used to be able to walk under the cracks of the door. Seriously, I just used to be able to, sometimes I'd run and I'd actually, I'd jump. I managed to get through the keyhole. So I was so tiny. But, there you go. And then I put some weight on when I was in 95. 98, I was still a huge embarrassed of my weight of my slimness so I'm, I'm not naked I've got underpants on and I've got a towel over me uh, for the massage because uh, I had a back I, was, I had problems with my back and uh, I was covering myself up and the lady who was doing the massage she said what are, you, what are you doing and I said I'm just a bit embarrassed I'm self conscious of my body and she said what's wrong with your body and I said, well, I'm just, I just think I'm just too skinny. And uh, she said, I'll go on, take, take the towel off then. So I took, I got the underpants on, I took the towel off. And she said, oh God, yeah, I see what you mean. Well, that didn't do me any good. She said, oh, she said, I'm quitting, I'm not doing this job anymore. And she ran off, jumped through a window, I didn't see her again. Admittedly, that's not the best story in order to sort of for self-image, but <laughs> and it never happened either. Uh, she said, "There's nothing wrong with your body. You're all right. You're slim. You know, I was no denying that, but I wasn't skinny." She said, "Don't call yourself skinny. You're just slim. I can't see your ribs. Well, I can see where they are because we all know where they are, don't we? You know, it's like if you put an egg on top of your head." people are going to see it because they know there's an egg there it's not really the same thing at all is it no but I used to be skinny enough where the what is it the the collarbone you could see the collarbone it's very prominent um, and then you know I put as my metabolism slow down with with age not with old age but about the age of 30 I kind of put weight on the weird thing about it is though when I was a security guard when I was 26 well 25 but you know between yeah between 26 and 27 I spent a lot of time <clears throat> When I was first a security guard, I used to go to the gym every couple of days. I was doing nights, go to the gym. So I was keeping myself, I was drinking um, protein shakes and I was eating well. I was taking food and eating every few hours. I was trying to sort of get myself, now I knew that I was able to put on a bit more muscle because my body was able to do it or put on a bit of weight and I was going to the gym and I was... I was turning out okay. 
and then I got another job where I was again sitting down on my arse all day insecurity but I wasn't going to the gym because I'd moved away from where the gym was and then when I wasn't at work I was sitting on my bum all the time as well and there was one point and I did put weight on I must have gone up about a stone if not more and that was the heaviest I'd ever been and I didn't realise it until I was I probably told this story before but I was living with my friend and I was laying down this was the days where I could still lay down on the floor um, and watch telly you know where you lean on your elbows like kids do well I, I still could do that I didn't normally do that but for some reason I was decided to do that probably to stretch my, my back out actually or to give the chair a rest and because the chair did moan a bit with the weight in that but anyway I, I, I just I lay down watching telly and my friend said can you get up please can you go and sit in the chair I said why he said I can't see the TV because of your ass. it's so big that's what that is literally what he said now I think he was joking I mean I had a few questions like why are you looking at that you know when you've got this lovely flickering box with images on that you could be looking at why are you deciding to look at my my um, secret place but you know and it gave me a little bit of a complex I'll be honest with you I started to think oh I wonder because I didn't it's almost like it was a different part of my body I wasn't connected to it as much as I thought I was and I thought well, it doesn't feel big I wasn't like touching it or anything but it just didn't generally feel big and uh, and I'd get on the tube you know on the trains and stuff and Sometimes I sit down, but then I'd, I kind of get up slowly just to make sure I hadn't sat on someone and crushed them. But uh, once I left that job, I lost weight again. When I lose, I, yeah, I did lose weight, and I kind of the weight got down uh, to like a a more kind of. Well, I just got became skinny again, really, or slim, slim, not skinny, slim. But I wouldn't go swimming. I wouldn't, would never ever take my top off. Ever. Well, ever. Actually, the whole time as an adult, I've never taken my top off in public, ever. Um, even though there's been times when I have physically been looked fairly fit, I guess, you know, compared to other times. But I've never, never had that that confidence you know some people walk around the street with their top off I don't I never have I did when I was a kid but I definitely don't now and I don't think I could I don't, I don't think I'm ever going to be able to do that which means I can't go to the swimming baths there's nothing to do with the uh the court case I mean just generally I'm not allowed to, I can't I, I can't get undressed in a public space and go to get into once I'm in the in the, the, the pool the swimming pool apart from the fact that I can't really swim but um, as long as I'm near the edge I'm okay getting in it once I'm in I'm okay because people can't see you can they can't see what it, underneath the water really but it's getting out again getting out's not so bad because if you've been in for a while doing a bit of swimming you kind of do get toned up because you're, you've you got blood pumping into your, your muscles and stuff um, the other thing I didn't like about swimming baths is the spectator like loads of people sitting on chairs around the pool watching 
For me, professional swimming is a spectator sport. Leisurely swimming is not. People swimming for exercise is not a spectator sport. So I would have a rule that if you're going to take someone, if you're going to, you know, if you're taking someone swimming, then you get in the pool with them. Or at the very least, no, just get in the pool with them. I know that's not always going to be possible, but generally, you know. So if there are a few spectators because they're not able to get into the pool for whatever reason, there'll only be like a small amount, a little handful of them, not like 40, 50 people all sitting around taking pictures and whatever. It's like, come on, man. Stop taking pictures of my belly. I'm not a whale. Stop calling me a whale. I don't care if you are a reporter from the local paper. This is a swimming pool. And I've not been beached. Stop it. Leave me alone. I don't, I don't eat plankton. Why do you try, keep trying to give me plankton? I don't want any of your plankton. Leave me alone. No, I can't do whale song. What are you playing me whale song tunes for? I don't understand it. Actually, like, leave it on it. It does sound nice. But I'm not a whale. No, I'm not a dolphin either. Why would, you, why would you ask me if I was a dolphin? Because I have kind eyes. I think... Really? Uh, no, that is not my breathing hole. Leave, get your fingers out, stop it. So, used to be super skinny, turned slim, then became fat. even when I was doing boxing not professionally obviously but when I was going to the boxing club in 2009 or something like that 2009, 2010 the see when I do exercise after probably the first 10 minutes I look like I've just completed a marathon during a like a torrential downpour honestly I, I look just or like I've just swum the, the Atlantic or something I'm just drenched completely drenched it's almost like I've just stood on my head and done a big wee and did it all over myself it's just I look really I feel good there's something quite nice because it's it releases toxins, doesn't it, when you sweat and it clears the pores and gets rid of some of the, the I don't know, whatever it is. But it's this nice feeling, but I, I don't half sweat when I exercise. I don't the rest of the time. You know, I'm not just like a, a profuse sweater. But a profuse sweater. Um, when I when I go into town, every shop's a sweatshop. We and so yeah, I when I was doing a boxing, well, everywhere, like including taekwondo, karate, uh, Wing Chun, whatever different place I was training at over the years, I'd sweat. And I have to take my T-shirt off and change it for another T-shirt because I could not travel. I couldn't travel home with that because not so bad in the summer if there's no one around and you can sort of um, stick something on top of the T-shirt and go home. But in the winter, you, you end up... You don't want to be going around with a, a wet T-shirt. Wet T-shirt competitions purposely are not held in the winter 
because it's cold. Oh, wait a minute. When I say wet t-shirt contests, I'm not, I don't mean that in the sense that I frequent such events because I don't, I never have. That's what the internet's for. No, I don't, <laughs> I don't, don't, I don't think they even exist anymore. It's something that used to be at holiday camps, isn't it, in the, in the 50s and stuff. <sighs> in the innocent age. The, the, what am I talking about? Yeah, so I'd have to, like with the boxing, that was the sweatiest I ever got. Because a boxing workout is, in my experience, the hardest workout of all of them. There's something it's I don't know if it's because of the 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 three minute exercise bit where you keep going for three minutes, whatever you're doing, whether it's skipping, whether it's on the bag, whether it's sparring, well not that we did any sparring, but like practicing, you know, punching and with the other person or whether it's uh, running around, whatever, you know, press ups or whatever. Those little like short bursts doesn't feel like short bursts of three minutes, but those bursts of three minutes does definitely have a phew, a real sweaty result for me. So I'd have to I'd have to take my t shirt off in the changing room, and I that's the worst part of the whole thing. So I tur I turned my back on the other people. And I, I kind of try and take the t-shirt off and put another t-shirt on and I think someone said you know what if you was able to punch as quickly as you changed your t-shirt just then you could win a world title we laughed and I said well, you know what if you can keep your mouth shut he said, yeah. I said, that's it. If you just, please keep your mouth shut. And he said, oi, I'm a boxer, don't you? I said, I'm a boxer too. He said, yeah, but you're, you're 39 years old. I said, yeah, so? He said, I'm 19 years old. I said, yeah, so? He said, I actually compete in contests. I said, yeah, so? He said, you can't. I said, I know, I can't. What's your point? He said, well, you're not really a boxer, are you? If you don't actually box in the ring, in a competition with another boxer, you're not really a boxer. I said, yeah, but I train. He said, yeah. I said, yeah. He said, well, yeah, you do train. I said, yeah. And he said to me, he looked at me in the eyes and he said, I can't think what else to say. I said, I don't know either, really. And he said, I thought this, this little kind of monologue, you know, this dialogue thing would actually go somewhere interesting. And I said, I was hoping that, I was. And he said, but it hasn't, has it? And I said, no. No, it's it's a bit one of those kind of strange dead ends, isn't it? It's, it's almost like a an incomplete pasty that's been left on a plate for far too long to really either reheat it or even put it back in the fridge. It's just you can't do anything with it maybe give it to the dog and he says I don't have a dog I said well, that's not really the point is it it's just the, the 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 point is that I don't think we can save this dialogue I don't think it's there's any way to uh, create it uh, creatively and he said, I don't think you can really use those two words together in a sentence. Creative, creatively, that doesn't even make sense. 
I said, I know, but I, I just didn't know what to say after I said the word creative. He said, how can you run out of things to say? I said, what do you mean? He said, well, you talk for an hour pretty much every day, at least an hour, about nothing. And when you're not doing that, anyone that knows you, no one that knows you would say that you're quiet in a sense of you don't have anything to talk about. You've always got something pointless to talk about. I said, listen, you're not being very friendly, really, are you? He said, no, I don't mean it horribly. Sweaty man. I said, what? He said, well, you are sweaty. I said, so are you. He said, yeah, but I'm a boxer. I said, come on, mate, let's not go down that road again. Can't we just get on? Can't we just be, live in peace? Can't we just have a little cuddle and move on with the rest of our lives? And he said, I was with you with the let's live in peace until you got to the cuddle bit. I said, what's wrong with that? He said, well... I think you overdo the old uh, kissing and cuddling that you mention in some of your stories. I said, what, what? He said, yeah, you, you, you talk about something with some complete stranger, some weird conversation that doesn't even make sense. And then you say, oh yeah, then we had a little kiss and a cuddle and danced a little bit and then we went and then we, then we you know, got on with our lives. And, I said, yeah. He said, well, isn't that a bit of a strange thing to say? I said, it might be strange, but at least I'm not dressed like a seagull. And he said, you got me there, to be fair. You do have me there. I can't really argue with that. I said, exactly. And uh, you know what? He said, what? I said, uh, I knew, no matter how this conversation went, however argumentative you got, that I would always win, simply because you were dressed like a seagull. He said, look, I forgot. I forgot I was dressed this way. And you do have a point. Nothing I say is going to be able to compete with uh, the fact that I'm dressed like a seagull I said exactly and uh, I don't suppose you want to tell me why you're dressed as a seagull and he said well, it seemed like a good way to end the, the conversation between us because let's face, let's face it it wasn't going anywhere was it it needed a little bit of an injection of uh, uh bit of silliness to so that we could bring it to a close I said yeah that's a, that's a good point I do uh, yeah I can I can see I can see where you're coming from with that one and this this little voice from nowhere said anyone want a banana anyone want a banana and I looked at the seagull and I said, do you want a banana? He said, yeah, I could do that. We could share if you like. I said, no, I don't want to share with you. I actually want that banana myself, I said. I just wanted to see if you wanted it first and now I'm going to have it. In fact, I don't actually really want it. But now I know that you want it, I want it even more. And he said to me, well, how can you decide that you're going to have it if just because you decide? I said, well, I've decided. He said, ah, oh, but I've got, a, I've got the advantage, he said to me. I said, what? Well, look at it. It's a kid with a banana 
asking people if they want a banana. I said, yeah, I can see that. Who do you think he's going to give the banana to? I said, he's going to give it to me because he's offered it. And I said, yeah, I'll have it because I like bananas. And fruit's really good, especially uh, after training. A banana's really good for, for your body. And he said, no, we're not talking about uh, dietary issues here. I'm talking uh, nutrition's a, a different subject. I'm just saying, who's he going to choose to give it to you? You, a sweaty middle-aged man with a, with a not only sweaty, you took your sweaty T-shirt off and a new T-shirt's sweaty as well. So he's going to think, perhaps you should change your T-shirt, not knowing that you already have three times I said look you're exaggerating I've changed it twice he said I know but exaggeration is good isn't it I said yeah I suppose it is sometimes and I said what's your point he's not going to give me a banana because he's going to be what scared of me because I've got a sweaty t-shirt he said no he's going to give me the banana this is he's going to be scared of me because I'm dressed like a huge seagull. I couldn't argue with him on that one. Let's face it, if a huge seagull, an adult human-sized seagull, says, give me your banana, I probably would just give him my banana. Just, just, just seems like the right thing to do. And he said, who are you talking to? I said, I'm talking to the audience, people are listening to the recording. Hello, everyone. Uh, you all right? I'm the seagull, I'm the big uh, giant seagull. Wait a minute, I said. You can't talk directly to the listeners. I'm the only one that can do that. You're just... Uh, you're just an extra. You're just an extra in the play. That's a bit rude. Yeah, it might be rude, but it's true. Yeah, I suppose. Why can't we both sound the same? Oh, don't do that again. We've been through that before. Not with me, you haven't. Well, it's always you, isn't it? It's me. It's all, you know. Yeah, but... Why don't you put a bit of effort in and put a different voice on? Well, that is a good point. I suppose I could. Well, why don't you? I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't. I haven't given it enough thought. Perhaps you should. Well, perhaps we all should do certain things that perhaps we don't. Or perhaps you should stop scaring children uh, with that big seagull costume you're wearing. He said, listen, can I let you in on a little secret? I said, all right. He said, uh, it's not a costume. I really am a seagull. Thank you very much. End of play. Credits. This play was made by Jason. It was all made up from his mind, his boring, pointless imagination. So I'm gonna, yeah. And I kissed the seagull goodbye and chucked a banana at him. So that's the end of this recording. If you're still listening, I do apologise. Um, should it be enough to send you bobbies? I'm going to go. And that's it. Just remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy. Will you let me say that? What? Who's that? To see goal. Go away. I'm finishing the recording now. But I want to say the bit at the end. I've already said it. 
Oh. Uh, you can say the last little bit that I say. Okay then, thanks. So take care of yourselves. Lots of love. Wink, wink, wink. Wait, wait a minute. Why did you go wink, wink, wink? I don't know. It just seemed like something a seagull would do. No. I think it's the idea of ending the recording is to slowly kind of just fade out, you know? Not start, not start making weird weird noises he said yeah sorry about that wink 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 I said what are you doing well, he said, I can't help it now it just it's, it almost feels like it's part of my life it's uh, it's like inbuilt now I said how could something be inbuilt if you've only done it twice wink wink three times uh, I said I'm going so take care Lots of love, and I'll speak to you tomorrow. Wink, wink. Bye. Wink, wink. Stop it. Stop. Wink, wink.